Hello, this is the data channel and you are uh, learning the Databricks Certified Associate Developer Spark related concepts uh, and uh, uh, specifically in this topic we will be learning uh, Spark data frame uh, writer basically how do you write a data of a Spark data frame uh, to a external storage uh, location and also what is the concept of uh, partitioning and what is the significance, uh, significance of partitioning partition by when we are uh, writing the data to a uh, specific uh, location and this is a, a topic 24 and uh, there is a entire playlist that we are uh, discussing or explaining about uh, the certification uh, course and uh, so before uh, proceeding if you are new to this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications uh, so let's get started So if you are new to this playlist, we would recommend you to please pause here for a minute and read through this to get a maximum out of this course. So in this video, we will be dis discussing how to save the data frame, uh, the data in the data frame to external storage locations uh, uh, with the uh, different op options. What are the different options uh, available when you are uh, doing the save operation or the write operation uh, to a external storage location? And also we will learn what is the concept of partitioning and repartitioning and uh, how it can be useful and how it can be handy when it comes to a real time scenarios. So before just quickly jumping to the practical, so we will just understand uh, the what Spark documentation says about data frame uh, writer so that uh, you will get theoretically um, like get some understanding from theoretical point of view as well, right? So as you can see the data frame writer uh, class uh, implemented in such a way that it helps in it, uh, it helps to write a data frame to external storage. So when we say external storage, it can be a file system and when you say file system, it might be Azure blob storage, S3 bucket, uh, Windows external, uh, Windows mount point, Linux mount point or HDFS, uh, Hadoop distributed file system. Uh, so it can be any uh, like blob storage, Azure blob storage, right? So any kind of uh, like a storage systems where you can try to write the data or it might be a ADLS where uh, you write a data into a data lake uh, Azure data lake uh, uh, storage also. So it can be any of those right and when you're working with uh, Databricks it can be a DBFS that is Databricks file system as well. So generally what we're calling all of them as a file systems here and uh, so this is as you can see there are uh, many options when it comes to here right there's a csv and what fo format you want to write the data right and what is uh, like uh, like you can write as a json and this is important like where you write a mode right what kind of mode you are using whether you want to um, just uh, write a data say, save and if the data is already existing you want to replace and uh, overwrite that data which is there uh, already in that same location. So we will see all of these in details, but just a high level uh, you need to understand. So there are many uh, parameters or there are many options that you can utilize here. But uh, in this uh, uh, topic or in this discussion, we will uh, cover very important uh, topics from uh, these, whatever you see here. But anytime you can go to the documentation and uh, you can read through this and understand uh, what exactly each of these uh, options mean. So now let's uh, quickly jump into the practical of it and uh, so to know the entire setup of this uh, notebooks and the sample data so whatever uh, we are actually um, showing here so we would recommend you to please check the previous videos or the first videos of this playlist uh, to uh, get this free setup done so now we will directly jump to the practicals of it with uh, one of the customer uh, table uh, we will take one of the customer data frame right so So what we are doing is uh, we will take uh, the customer data frame that we already have uh, and uh, we are just selecting a few of the columns here right so if you see the actual customer uh, data frame and if you do a print schema so it is having a couple of uh, columns or attributes in this uh, but uh, as you can see address id birth country birth date Customer ID demographics. So as you can see, uh, uh, demographics is a structure uh, data type. That means it is having a like hierarchical level of. A, uh, it's it's not a 
uh, it's a complex uh, data data type actually like other uh, compared to others uh, so it is having a nest it might have a nested because it is a structured data type right and uh, we are just taking address id customer id and demographic uh, just uh, in this uh, uh, demo and we will write to a temporary data frame so here this is the customer result is a data frame that we will be using and uh, what we are uh, trying to achieve here is uh, so the, to write this data which is coming right uh, into a external storage location or uh, some locations where uh, you can uh, see this as a uh, files right so now uh, before that like uh, let's display whatever we have um, selected right to understand whether uh, the columns are selected rightly as you can see the columns are selected rightly there are only three columns and you can see structured data type is uh, shown in this like hier hierarchical uh, format right and uh, next uh, so we will try to write this data frame to a temporary location so as when you say uh, to a location basically right not temporary location so when you want to write this uh, to a external uh, storage or external location what that means is uh, whether you can write this data frame to a blob storage azure blob storage or you can write it to azure uh, data lake storage or you can write to amazon s3 uh, kind of a storage uh, or you can use um, Hadoop distributed file system, but uh, now currently we are using Databricks and we don't have any other any such kind of storage. We can use even the DBFS that is data Databricks file system. So Databricks file system, if you want to see what is there in the Databricks file system, it is just a percentage FS and LS, uh, and uh, you can give the root directory here by back, uh, by slash. So once you give the slash here, it's a root directory and it will show all the possible uh, directory structures that are already in the Databricks uh, file system and uh, you can pretty much write to, to, to that file system right so this is a file system where we have uh, all this uh, like storage locations already the uh, we can call it as a mount points if it is mount but here it is just the storage locations so now we will try to write so when you want to type to try to write right so what we will do is uh, uh, basically we will try to like if you see before we try to write we can do a data frame dot rdd dot get partitions so what get num partition shows is uh, when you write this to a external location uh, how many partition you can expect that means it you can expect eight partitions but partitions is a little more advanced but uh, first before that we will try to write the data first right and after that we can come back to this so now if you want to write it so we can just uh, give the data frame and dot write so as you can see it it um, goes and points to the data frame writer uh, like library or uh, the implementation right and uh, after that uh, you need to give the option basically uh, to specify the path so in the option we will specify the path here right So in the path uh, you can give the location so we will give the dbfs location here again so we can give any location i'm just giving uh, this slash tmp this temporary location that we have seen here slash this location i want to write the data into and i'm writing it uh, it as a customer output right customer result is being written to this folder in the dbfs now so let's try to execute this so it will execute but still there is no action called so it will not uh, write, write, write it physically though only the command will be successful so we need to write it as a dot save yeah as you can see it has uh, written the nine files and out of nine files one is a delta log which is a metadata actually and uh, so other rest of the eight files uh, are actually written as a data so you might wonder now this particular data frame is written to eight parts right so it is written as a eight part that means uh, it, it, the data has been partitioned to the eight different partitions here so that's the uh, like uh, so who is deciding the partition the spark itself is deciding the partition based on the volume of the data and the cluster size and the cluster configurations uh, it actually decides uh, how many partitions it has to create so it has chosen eight partition and uh, before even writing to this you can run this command and see how many partitions are expected to be written right by default 
and uh, however uh, you, you have a control basically on this uh, to kind of a uh, repartition this right uh, that means you want to choose a different number of partitions uh, uh, rather than the default partition you can use uh, dot repartition here and you can specify suppose if it is 8 you want to uh, partition only 3 right and you can try to execute this so now this is expected error uh, so where exactly it is saying uh, you cannot um, because already the folder this folder is already existing so we are trying to write into the same folder that is the reason it's not uh, allowing so basically in this case uh, what we can do is uh, we can uh, give an option called as dot mode so when you try to write so after that you can give the option called as dot mode so in the dot mode uh, you can give the option basically as a overwrite right so let's try to execute it now again so now it is successful and uh, we will try to see the see back the result now so there are more files now okay so even though we are kind of a writing that means overwriting what we were expecting is uh, to overwrite the old files that is previous files as you can see now uh, we, we were expecting only three files but we are having 12 files the older files are still existing the question is why because as you can see if you just sort it by the modification time uh, so the first uh, three files whatever you see are the current file that we are used uh, the only the three partition and the rest are others right so whatever you see are the previous partitions so you might be wondering why this uh, is not overwriting basically this is a concept like when we are uh, not specifying any file format right it is a delta format that is where you see a delta log here right and uh, when it is a delta log that means it is not a par key it is a one level above par key that is uh, it's a delta de delta location so in the delta location the concept is it stores the history as well right uh, so it stores the history but it will always point to the uh, lo uh, like logically it will always point to the current data that means when you try to read this data uh, as a delta location and uh, when you try to execute uh, read it and uh, uh, kind of uh, show that so it will not use the other uh, data it will use these the first three partitions only because these are the most uh, recently executed ones but why we are keeping history is delta is supposed to store a history for last uh, 30 days by default uh, so that if in case of any uh, time travel we will have to do it it will just use the previous versions but by default it will use the latest version of the data that means these three partitions only it will use when you try to read this location as a delta okay so don't get confused so this is a concept of delta okay so this partitioning concept will be clear when we take an example of json so let's take an example of json now so the same uh, we will write it as output json okay so we will uh, first we, what we will do is we will not specify any partitions here right so we can give uh, something called as format here and uh, you can specify json as a format here right and let's try to execute json here so once json is executed uh, you can see uh, this location is having uh, how many files right so these are all uh, these three are metadata and except these three metadata files so you have eight files which is actually the data which is uh, eight partition because by default it is taking eight partition for this particular data frame right and uh, now what we will do is we will try to repartition with uh, say for example we can use some different number here we can use two okay so we will try to re uh, repartition now json as a two and uh, let's try to execute okay so now if you see actual these are all underscore whatever you see whatever starts with underscore is all metadata but if you see part files okay there are only two part files that means you can see we have asked only two partitions here so it is giving only two partitions so this is actually more uh, um, like uh, more explainable in terms of json because it actually completely overwrites but if it is a delta that is a default format uh, it physically still stores the old data and but logically it will point to the only the current version so this is the this is how we use for the json as well right 
and uh, the concept of repartitioning so you can repartition any number of times right like if i was if i want to make it like partition to 20 so the same json and uh, once i repartition it to 20 so now as you can see how many partition that you have given is the repartition 20 right so here uh, except uh, the underscore uh, kind of files right you can expect 20 files from uh, here 002 019 that means 20 files so finally uh, one more option we can see where we want to write the data to a cs as a format as a csv so we'll try to execute this and see how exactly this executes see the problem here is uh, it has thrown the error uh, with the clear detail of this uh, demographic demographic data, uh, data type that we have seen because the demographic, uh, uh, demographic data type is a struct data type as we have already seen right so if there is any struct data type or nested data type like this uh, it cannot be written to a csv uh, file format so that is a limitation of uh, writing to a csv file format and that that is a error that it clearly shows here so if you want to do this uh, if you want to still write this uh, the only option is uh, uh, you need to convert the struct type uh, by uh, segregating into a multiple columns the data into multiple columns exploding into multiple columns or uh, you can uh, uh, basically use any other file formats uh, that we have already seen like json and other formats uh, or uh, we cannot uh, or, or the other option is you can just remove this column and write other columns which are just a simple data types with which are not the struct data types so hope this concept of repartitioning is clear for you now and uh, the last uh, option that we want to see is the compression so so in the same command we can uh, specify the compression uh, method so where we can uh, actually compress the data into a different uh, compression techniques so here uh, the compression techniques by default is snappy so you can uh, pretty much uh, if you just uh, don't give any uh, compression technique it just takes as a snappy but so here we can use uh, lg4 and other other uh, um, other kind of uh, compressions as well right and uh, whenever i'm giving this let's try to execute this again right and uh, maybe i can give i'll just don't give the file format here and also the repartition i just want to show the compression uh, technique here right so once you execute it uh, basically let let me give us compression compressed right so once we execute uh, the data will be compressed in this format uh, that lg4 format okay so now uh, if you kind of uh, try to see this location It will store the data in a compressed manner so that is the whole uh, reason of this uh, like uh, so there are other options right if you can just uh, google the data manipulations right so you can you can, uh, you can see different options uh, when you are doing a, if you just see the spark documentations here right so the data uh, the data frame writer uh, so as we were seeing there are a couple of uh, different options that you have uh, basically you can uh, explore those options and see in the as per the spark documentations